let's take a look. First of all, I realize that I don't like it the way it is presented, right? I have to rearrange as negative 6x plus 2y equals 7 and 3x minus y equals 9. And now it's your decision. You want to use elimination, you want to use substitution. In this particular case, we can do either one. Um, I prefer, prefer elimination because it's easier for me. Um, so in case you want to use your substitution, you can only use it for y, the second one. You cannot do this, 6 or 2 or, or 3. So you have to use this. Now if you want to use elimination, then I will simply multiply what by what? Which equation by what? We have an interesting equation here. The second one, if you multiply the second one by 2, that's it. Both x and y, right? That's it. So negative 6x plus 2y equals 7, and 6x minus 2y equals 18. What is left on the left hand side? Zero. Equals 25. What do you think about this? I got a problem. Good. That's <laughs> it. In other words, no solutions. Good. Let's look at the other one. The other one is the, in the appropriate order. I have 5, 3, 3, and 4. And I have no choice. What do you mean by I have no choice? I have to multiply both equations by something. There's no way I can eliminate either one, either x or y without multiplying both equations by appropriate numbers. So what are the appropriate numbers? Would you like to eliminate x? It doesn't matter. Would you like to eliminate y? Again, it doesn't matter. Whichever. Substitution? Absolutely not. Can you? Yes. But it will be massive work. Because you're going to have a fraction to work with. I don't recommend it. So, which uh, variable would you like to eliminate? X. Okay, perfect. If we decide to eliminate x, what do we multiply the top and what do we multiply the, the, the other one by? Excellent. And the other one by? And then I will get 15, not positive 15 and negative 15. And it will never go away. Excellent. Good. So I multiply the first one and I get uh, 15x plus 9y equals 3. And then negative 15x minus 20y equals 30. Indeed, we have a plan. x is gone. So this is negative 11y equals 33. Therefore, y must equal? Very good. This is good, but it's not good enough, right? We have to go back and find x. OK, no problem. Let's say I go back here, and I have 3x minus 12 equals negative 6, or 3x equals 6, or x equals 2. Don't worry. We will catch our mistakes if we have any right this moment because we go back and check. Okay, so I go back and check to the original problem with 2, negative 3. 2, negative 3, 2, negative 3. Um, 10 minus 9, yes. Uh, 6 minus 12, negative 6. Yes. Any questions on solving a system? In your first uh, equation, the, the moment you found no solution, that means the lines are parallel? The lines are parallel, exactly. OK. Now uh, we have to review equations. Quadratic, rational, and radical. Any questions? And then we have to look at uh, simplifying uh, radicals. Ready? So let's look at a quadratic equation, and then a rational, and then a radical. I'm 
looking for a quadratic. Okay, ready? So let's say um, 4x squared minus 13x equals negative 3. And also I would like to look at 5x squared minus 20x equals 0. These are both quadratic equations. What do we do with the first one? Yes, setting it equal to 0. 4x squared minus 13x plus 3 equals 0. Very good. What now? It's a trinomial. It's in descending order. No greatest common factor. No negative leading coefficient. No special product. 1 is not the leading coefficient. I'm down to the last possibility. It means that I'm looking for two numbers whose product is and whose sum is. product must be very good 12 awesome and the and the sum minus 13 great job well done guys so good so then please give me two numbers since the product is positive both have to have the same sign since the sum is negative both have to be negative Negative 1, negative 12. Very good. The product is 12 and the sum is negative 13. And now what happens next? I rewrite the equation. How? Four x squared minus x minus 12 x plus 3 equals 0. Well done. From the first two, what do I factor out? Very good. What is left in parentheses? In parentheses from the other two before I even look. Of course. I want to put it in. Who knows? I may make an error and put something else, and I get, I, then I get stuck. OK, sign and factor outside. Excellent. Well done. Thank you. So now the common factor is 4x minus 1, and then x minus 3, and we get two solutions. Can anyone give us those two solutions? From 4x minus 1 equals 0, we get 1 fourth, and from x minus 3 equals 0, we get 3. So x equals 1 fourth, or x equals 3. I'm hoping that you're going to review all these notes for Wednesday, right? And finish up the homework. If you don't finish up the homework, you're going to have difficulties, or potentially we may have difficulties, I should say. OK, let's go back to this one. How do I solve this? It's an equation. First, I will definitely divide both sides by 5. I cannot divide by x. But I get x squared minus 4x equals 0. Remember, a quadratic equation that does not have the free term is always the easiest possible type of quadratic equation. Why? What should I do next? I would have to factor out. That's it. And I'm done. I get two x values right away. Doesn't need anything. Say it again? Yes, of course. Thank you. 0 and 4. That is the easiest type of quadratic equation that you can find. Questions? OK, I would like us to review uh, rational equations. And here they are. Linear rational. Good. Um, here's the, our first one. 
the home will be divided to rational expressions and then rational variables. Yeah. Just to because we needed to know how to multiply, divide, add, and subtract before we looked at the equations. Correct. Absolutely. Okay. I don't see what I'm looking for, so I'm going to make the first one. I'm going to make make one up. Okay. So let's say I have two uh, x over x minus one equals. Two over x plus one. What type of equation is this? It has x in the denominator, it must be rational. But it's also a proportion. Which is nice. What do we do with the proportion always? Cross multiply. Not before we state two restrictions. And the restrictions are x cannot be x minus 1 cannot be 0, not x, right? x plus 1 cannot be 0, not x. x can be 0 x minus 1 cannot be 0 and x plus 1 cannot be 0, which makes x cannot equal or excellent. Indeed, x cannot be 1 or negative 1. Great job. So now, only now, I can cross multiply. So when I cross multiply, we get 2x times x plus 1 equals 2 times x minus 1. Do we agree with that step? So 2x times x plus 1 must equal 2 times x minus 1. Agreed? Very good. So then we have 2x squared plus 2x equals 2x minus 2. So I distributed, now what? What do I need to do? Excellent. So 2x with negative 2x, they are the same. So this is 2x squared plus 2 equals 0. So then we have 2. I divide by 2. I don't even need it. So x squared plus 1 equals 0. And we know that this has no solutions that are real because we don't know how to factor. And then we have x squared equals negative 1. We have not talked about complex numbers yet. So this is a complex number, or complex numbers actually, too. Um, so you will not encounter something like this. I just make it up, made it up. So I didn't. It turns out that it doesn't have real solutions. So you can say no real solutions. But it's, in your case, it's not going to be that. OK, so now uh, we're ready to look at. Um, a slightly more difficult situation. Okay, here it is. 2 divided by x plus 1 minus 1 divided by x minus 1 equals 2x divided by x squared minus 1. So this is a rational equation that is not a proportion. You cannot just simply go ahead and cross multiply. So what do we do in these situations? In case you are using the method that I showed in class, you can use your own method. It's up to you. I'm trying to get the denominators to be the same. Okay, so I recommend 2 over x plus 1 minus 1 over x minus 1 minus 2x over x plus 1, x minus 1. We need to factor. So we have to state two restrictions, and they are. x can be equal to minus 1. Or. Very good. So now we know the least common denominator. Do not forget the equal symbol and zero. The least common denominator is? Very good, awesome. 
So now please tell me what two you will you multiply the numerators by. Excellent. The second one you will multiply by. Excellent. And the last one by? Say it again. One or nothing. You don't have to write anything. I just want to make sure that you understand that. Okay. So can anyone dictate the numerator? Very good. We cannot. Very good. And then? Very good. So this is over 1, but it's not ready to cross multiply. Or it's you can say a fraction is 0 when the numerator is 0. It's up to you. Same thing. So uh, we have to combine like terms at the top. The 2x with negative 2x go away. So what is left is negative x minus 3 over x plus 1. x minus 1 equals 0 or 0 over 1. It's up to you how you want to say it or write it. So then what has to happen here? Now, it's now it's a ratio. Yes, so you can cross multiply. So then negative x minus 3 must be 0 or negative x equals 3 or x equals negative 3. Is negative 3 among the list of restrictions? No. no. So I will say definitely it must be the solution. Any questions on rational equations or proportions? Uh, what if I have A equals B over X plus T and I want to solve for T? Assuming that x, b, and a are known. So what should I do? It's a proportion. I can't do that. But before I do that, eventually I will. But right now, what should I do? Because it's a proportion. It's a proportion. What do we do with the proportion? Always proportion. Right here. We just did this a minute ago. What did we do here? It was a proportion. What did we do? We crossed multiply. That's the major property of a proportion. We can cross multiply. That's why we love proportions and we really don't all this because this is not a proportion. I have several steps to go through before I change it into a proportion. Yes, Maureen? No, this is just A. There is nothing. That's why we have to change it into a proportion first. So A quantity X plus T equals b times 1. We are solving for t. What should I do next? Distribute. Yes. However, I prefer to divide. But, but it's yes, absolutely. We are solving for t. What should I do next? I'm solving for t. What is the final step? Yes, exactly negative x plus b over a. And that's done. Any questions? Any questions? Is this OK, everyone? Yes? You go ahead. Jay, you want to say something? No. OK, can we move on to radical equations then? OK, let me choose a radical equation now. Okay, so let's say uh, the square root of 6x plus 1 equals x minus 1. Is this a radical equation? Yeah. Good. 
So what should we do? How do we proceed here? Excellent. I completely agree. So the left hand side will be 6x plus 1, but if you only write by mistake only two terms on the right hand side, everything else is gone, collapses completely. So when we square x minus 1, how many terms do we have to write? 3. And they are? One squared is one. Very good. Indeed. X squared minus two x plus one. First term squared minus two times the first times the second plus the second term squared. Okay, so then we have x squared minus eight x. Luckily one goes away. The nicest possible quadratic equation because there is no free term. There is no term without a variable, without the variable or the variable. Oops, 11. Okay, so what do I do with that? How do I get the solutions? Yes? I can never divide by x. I will never divide by x. This is a quadratic equation and it has to have two solutions. Factor out x and what is left in parentheses. So there are two options. That's fine. Sorry about that. I misunderstood then. My apologies. Good. But since, remember, this is a, a radical equation and we squared both sides, it is part of the problem to go back and check. So the square of 6x plus 1 equals x minus 1, and when I plug in 0, the left-hand side is 1 and the right-hand side is negative 1. Would you accept this? No. So 0 does not work. Now I'm going to check 8. The right-hand side is 7. 48 plus 1 is 49. The square root of 49 is 7. Would you accept 8? Yes. We will say yes only for x equals 8. I found when I was doing my homework, the most serious mistakes I was making was to forget to do that stuff. Yeah, that is mandatory because uh, remember, it's the it's the principle that is not a hundred percent legitimate. So when we add two to both sides, we didn't change the solutions. When we multiply both sides by five, we didn't change the solutions. But when we square both sides or cube both sides, we do change the outcome. So it's possible that the solutions, like in, in this case, zero did not work, does not work in the original problem. Okay, so let's look at a um, complex rational expression. I'm looking for one. If not, I'll make one up. Nope. I'll make one up. I don't see one here. Okay. So let's take a look at 1 over x minus 1 plus 1 over x over 2 over x minus 4. This is a complex rational expression, and we're asked to fully simplify it. How do I start? What is a starting point. Well, I have to look at the numerator and find the least common denominator and find the least common denominator. State a restriction for these denominators. So x cannot be or excellent. x cannot be 0 or 1. What is the least common denominator in the numerator? Awesome. Good. So what do these need? The first one needs? Yes. And the second one needs? Yeah. 
return to the same one you worked out? No, because x minus 1 must multiply by x to get x times x minus 1. And x was not multiplied by x, but was multiplied by x minus 1 to get x times x minus 1. So therefore, it has to get the same thing. So x was multiplied by x minus 1. The numerator has to be multiplied by x minus 1. You understand why? Because if I multiply the top by 2, I cannot multiply the denominator by 3. It has to be the same quantity. Is that OK? OK, so then, can anyone dictate the numerator? It's 1 times x, which is x, and 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1. What about the least common denominator in the denominator? I know. Well, I don't know why you don't come closer. OK. It's up to you. OK, the least common denominator in the denominator. Four, yes, of course. Maybe of course. So the adjustments, I like to call them. So what do you multiply 2 by? X. No, it has x, so x equals x. So it's multiplied by 1. It's the same. There is no change. But here, yes, you're agree, I agree with you. From 1 to x was multiplied by x, so that's why 4 gets an x. But 2 does not because it's the, the denominator is the same. It didn't change. So can anyone give us the numerator now? Yes? Minus 4x indeed. Is that clear? OK, so then I copy the numerator, which is 2x minus 1 over x, x minus 1. And what do I do now with the denominator? Exactly. So this is x over negative 4x plus 2 in the correct order. That's how we divide two fractions. You mean the two terms, these two terms? 2 minus 4x is negative 4x plus 2. It's like 2 plus 3 is 3 plus 2. Yeah, I just wanted to explain why. Not just say yes, but also sh explain why. Uh, yes? Uh, yes, because if you remember when we factored, from the very beginning we said, first we identify what it is, then we are looking for a greatest common factor, then a negative leading coefficient, and of course in descending order. If it's not in descending order, I will not be able to simplify. Yes, if I don't put it in descending order, I will not be able to continue and simplify potentially common factors. Everything has to be in descending order. Every polynomial without the negative leading coefficient, every polynomial has to have a factored form. Because otherwise, I will not be able to simplify. Does it make sense? Yeah, it's just a tricky little step that's easy to Yes, it's very easy to miss. That's why, that's why, yes, and I apologize to you. Uh, I had to repeat it so many times when we factored. Remember, I, we always went through those steps. Because I wanted you to get into the habit of asking yourself, descending order, yes, descending order, no, or descending order, negative leading coefficient, common factor, simplified, and um, greatest common factor and negative leading coefficient. Yeah. I have to say uh, that the book does not really emphasize it as it should. That's my opinion. OK, then. So now I have a negative leading coefficient, and these two have a common factor. Also, I have to add to this list negative 4x plus 2 cannot equal 0. 2, negative 2. So x does not equal 1 half. So we have three restrictions now. How come? This, is just, this just popped up. It wasn't there. We didn't have a negative 4x plus 2 in the denominator. Now we do because we had to flip this. OK, so now I can simplify the x with x, but what do I do with this? So the numerator is 2x minus 1. OK, I do have an x minus 1. What do I do with this? How do I factor this? What do I have factor? from negative 4x plus 2. 
and the negative leading coefficient. Mandatory. So negative 2. What is left in parentheses? Aha. See what happens now if I don't simplify by factoring? I will not cancel that common factor of 2x minus 1. So now the simplified form is negative 1 over 2 times x minus 1. You understand why now all polynomials have to be in descending order, no negative leading coefficient, and fully factored? Yes. Yes, if, I, if you don't put it, you may forget and you may think it's 0. So that's why I always put it. I know you'll say, but it's redundant. We know it's 1. I know you know. But in the heat of the moment, doing a test, you may forget that that's a 1. So how do we get that 1 again? 2x minus 1 divided by 2x minus 1, 1. 2x minus 1 divided by 2x minus 1, 1. OK. Um, we have the last section that we have to work on is um, radicals and simplifying radicals. Ready? And rationalizing denominators. Ready to rationalize first? OK, so here's an example. OK, I think we have 15 minutes, and it's, it's good. We are going to be able to finish. You must review your notes in this, these two videos for Wednesday, right, everyone? OK, so let's say we have this. And we want to rationalize. What do we have? What should be the answer before we even decide what to rationalize by? The answer in the denominator must be yes. Excellent. Good. So obviously, I need the same index. Otherwise, I can multiply them. I can, but it's not going to work. So what now? We need to multiply and divide by something to get that x, y, z. To get that x, y, z, I can't. Yes, you're right. This whole fraction, this whole fraction will be 1 because top and bottom will be identical. That's why. Both are the same. They have to be the same. Say it again. X to which power? No, because x times x squared is not x to the seventh. We will not be able to clear the seventh root. Six. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. To z to the fourth power. And now this is correct. Excellent. Now, it's a different story when we have, let's say, uh, the square root of 3 over the square root of x minus the square root of b. This is a different story. We still multiply and divide by 1. But what do we have here? want to put a number here? We can, if that's what you meant. No, we just, I just added a number in there. That's fine. Yes? You're talking about the index? Yeah, the index is 2, but we don't write it. I just changed the problem a little bit. 
I thought that you meant that we should have a number somewhere. And then I put it in. Okay, what do we multiply and divide by? This is what we would multiply by, by the cosine. Good, good. So this is 2 the square of x, but plus the square of b. 2 the square of x plus the square of b. This is still 1. The numerator is easy, but the denominator, well, in this case, you don't have to multiply. It's just the square root of 3. So 2 the square of x plus the square of b. But what about the denominator? Remember, we are using the formula a minus b times a plus b. And you have to give me a squared minus b squared. Please remember this. We have it on that agreement. OK, ready? So what is the denominator? Of course, very good. Minus? Minus b. Excellent. Very good. So let's simplify other uh, radical expressions. Any questions? Have you seen these problems in uh, my math lab? Yes? OK, perfect. So please review and finish up my math lab. OK, so that's all we have uh, left from the entire material. I'm happy we appear to be able to go through everything. OK, so let's suppose we want, I'm going to pick some problems from this book. Radicals and rational exponents. Okay. So let's say um, 32 raised to negative 4 fifths. That's one example. And uh, then I want to y to 1 fifth to the fourth power. Everything to divided by, uh, it's 10 here. 3 over 10. Okay. And also um, 5, the cube root of 16, plus the cube root of 54. OK. Ready? So first we're asked to uh, simplify this. What I would recommend first, replace, you could replace 32 by 2 to the fifth. Would you agree? That's one option. And then I'll show you another option. So then we copy the base. What happens with the exponents? Which operation we perform with 5 and negative 4 fifths? Do we add them, do we multiply, or do we subtract? Oh, it's for division. We subtract when we divide. So it's not subtraction. So we subtract when we have, for example, 2 to the 10th over 2 to uh, the 7th. We copy the base. 10 minus 7 is 3. We cannot add unless we multiply. So 2 to the 10th times 2 to the 7th is it, indeed we add. So the last one, the last option is to multiply. We have to multiply the exponents. So how much is when we raise to a power? So 2 to the 10th, everything to the 3rd is 2, and we multiply to get 30. So they, these are the three rules. So here, when we multiply, we have 5 over 1 multiplied by negative 4 over 5, and we simplify the 5s, so the answer is negative 4. But we cannot leave a negative answer in the final, a negative power in the final answer, so we have to write this. So 2 to negative 4 is 1 over 2 to the 4th which simplifies into 1 over 16. This is, I think, the uh, easier way, changing the 32. Another way would be to plug in. So if you have 32 raised to negative 4 fifths, you can rewrite it as the fifth root of 32 and everything raised to negative 4. That's another option. You will determine that 2 is the answer, the fifth root of 32. And then you raise to negative 4, and you get the same thing, still 1 over 16. 
whichever is easier for you. The second one is fine. So women about minus four is outside the country inside the radical is the same thing. Well, we don't really want to put that inside the radical. But, you see it written like that. You can but it yes, you can. You can. It doesn't matter. You have negative four over five. So I would recommend, because we always, almost always, uh, connect the uh, sign in front to the top. So leave the negative four alone and just take the fifth root of thirty-two, because it's the denominator, right? So apply this to, uh, the th to 32, the fifth root, get the answer, and then copy the power, and that would be easier, I think. But yes, you're right. You can write 32 raised to negative 4 and everything the fifth root on it. It's the same thing, but it's more work. So you're going to have 32 raised to negative 4 and everything to 1 fifth, or the fifth root of 32 to negative 4. I don't recommend this one. You're going to get the same answer, but I don't recommend it. Okay, so uh, here's the second one. So we have 2, I'm sorry, so it was 2y to 1 fifth everything to the fourth over y to 3 over 10. So what do we do now? How do we simplify this radical expression? Because it's, it is a radical. Although I don't see the radical, it's a fractional exponent. A fractional exponent means a radical. So first I have to raise 2 to the fourth power, and I get 16. Then I copy the base. What operation do I perform with the powers when I raise y to 1 fifth, everything to the fourth power? What operation is that? I copy the base. What happens with the exponents? Add, subtract, or multiply. Say it again. OK. So let's go back. When we raise to a power, we have to multiply. When we multiply expressions with the same base, we add the powers. When we divide rational expressions with the same base, we subtract. So one more time, which one is it? Yes, so y to 4 fifth, thank you, divided by y to 3 tenth. Now I copy 16, and now I copy the base, and what happens to the exponents? Add, subtract, or multiply. Say it again. Yes, because we divide. So then 4 fifth minus 3 tenth. What is the least common denominator? Uh, 10. Yes. So then we multiply this by? Very good. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. So this is 16. Y to 1 half, or 16, the square root of Y, of course. Okay, let's look at this addition. Any questions on this problem? So 5, the cube root of 16, plus the cube root of 54. We are asked to add them, but at this time, we can't. But I realized that the cube root of 16 can be written as 8 and 2. So this will be 5, the cube root of 8, the cube root of 2, plus. So what, how do I break up 54 then? Very good, awesome. So this will be the cube root of 27 and the cube root of 2. Great job. How much is this and how much is this? The first one is the cube root of 8 is? The cube root of 27 is? Very good. Awesome. So now how much is 5 times 2? 10 the cube, 10 the cube root of 2 plus 
3, the cube root of 2. How much is 10 apples plus 3 apples? 13, the cube root of 2. We have one more minute. Let's look at one more, last one. So let's say I have a square root of uh, 24x divided by the square root of 3x. Do I write them with one radical or not? The answer is yes, if they have the same factors. If they don't have the same factors, no. And I will just rationalize. Excellent. They do have the same factors. I can simplify. So by 3, 1 and 1, the square root of 8. How do I present the square root of 8? As the square root of times the square root of. Excellent. So then this is 2 the square root of 2. Great job.